We've been talking about this for a long time, and finally we're here, in the beautiful garden of the inspiring beekeeper Christoph Frank, to learn about beekeeping. This is the Evolution Show. Welcome to the Evolution Show. I'm your host, Johan Landgren. The Evolution Show is all about connecting the dots, to see the bigger picture, and address some of the biggest challenges and opportunities of our time. We focus on smart energy solutions, electric transports, artificial intelligence, AI, and, of course, inspiration for sustainable living. And today, we talk about beekeeping and are visiting a very inspiring beekeeper, Christoph Frank. Thanks for having us, Christoph. You have known me since about five or six years, I think, uh, and I have learned a lot from you. So I thought, what better than to visit you and um, get acquainted with how you're working and uh, why you're doing, you have a certain approach to beekeeping uh, and what you have learned through the years. Because I think that's something that uh, could inspire new beekeepers as well as experienced ones. And I could mention that we are standing here in Christoph Frank's garden and you have, I don't know how many uh, beehives do you have at, at the moment? Just now uh, 11, 11 beehives. Yeah. Um, and um, you're also working full time as a nurse? Yes, I'm working on the intensive care unit as a specialist nurse. Uh, and, uh, but this is my, uh, yeah, my, my in most interesting hobby. Yeah. Uh, to uh, keep bees and to uh, live with nature. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but you're dedicating quite a lot of time to this. I mean, um, you're working quite hard, but you're also working a lot with the bees. So, but what inspired you to become a beekeeper? If you go back a little bit, you 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 you, you come from Germany from the beginning. So, yes. So did it, did you count? You meet the bees or meet beekeeping in some some uh, way before you came to Sweden or? No, I read a, a lot about uh, beekeeping and uh, uh, it was a fascination. Uh, I thought that uh, the bees and the bee colonies uh, has so much in, in uh, so much uh, we, we don't know about. Uh, and this is a, a very interesting thing and you learn um, a lot of things every day when you're keeping bees. Uh, so it's a real inspiring uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. And you, you have inspired me in many ways. I could mention one is that uh, from the beginning, when you start as a beekeeper, uh, before the winter, you give uh, the bees sugar syrup. That's the common thing, uh, because you want to uh, get as much honey as you want as possible to sell, of course, or consume as for yourself. So for the winter, you can give them sugar syrup, but you, as much as you can, as I understood it, you let them keep their honey. Yes. Um, if you think back, uh, bees and their history goes back uh, much, uh, a lot of million years, and uh, they have all the time uh, uh, had their their own honey uh, during the winter, and uh, why should they not have that uh, uh, fine stuff yeah. uh, nowadays? Uh, we we don't have to be so greedy and so um, to take all the, the honey away from the bees. Um, a lot of uh, scientists say that um, that they would. Um, yeah, uh, in in winter that they will can live very well uh, on the, on the sugar, but there's a lot of um, of things elements in the honey they don't get with the sugar. No. So I believe in uh, ge giving them sugar uh, honey till uh, back before the winter. Yeah. And um, it um, it works for me. Yeah. And I've tried it now, it's my second season I tried uh, just with honey. 
sometimes you don't have enough honey, so you have to add some of some sugar yes, syrup. That's right. Uh, but as you say, I mean, there's vitamins, there are minerals, and increasingly, we mentioned on another episode earlier that they're using uh, honey for medicinal pur purposes in different ways, and they're discovering discovering new things all the time. So perhaps right. it's a good thing for the bees to have their own super energy as well. So uh, yeah, but you're also uh, you're having your um, educating new beekeepers, both adults, but I think you also have invited the children here yes. to, to learn more about bees. What's your idea behind that? We have uh, a school uh, on the other side of the road uh, and there's a, a kindergarten also. Uh, and um, in the beginning when I began with beekeeping, uh, there were some children, uh, there were some children who um, stamped on the on the bees uh, which um, warmed up on the, on the stones uh, around the around the school mm. and uh, when uh, they I crushed, talk, crushed them they crushed them no. uh, they they uh, thought that they uh, yes that they have to do this to to get rid of the insects mm. but uh, then I invited the the classes uh, to uh, my uh, bee garden here and uh, showed them how bees are living, how they are working together and uh, this raised uh, their yeah, opinion about the insects very much and uh, after that we had a, a lot of very interested uh, children who, who asked a lot of quite um, clever questions about beekeeping and uh, environment and uh, insects um, and this is a, a very good thing for the for the future when our children are capable to to see the advantage advantages of the insects and the bees in yeah. uh, this in this case yeah so this is very nice and i um, invite them every year to come here and uh, take a look at the bees yeah and uh, um, you, have, you mentioned school children and so on, and people might think that, oh, is it dangerous to work with bees? How do you do when you have, a, let's say, a child or some uh, new beginner coming here? To, do you always ask them to, to you know, wear the dresses, the whole uh, dress, uh, full, full equipped with the gloves and everything? Or what do you, how, what's your approach to bees when you work with them? Yes, um, it is so... If you open the beehives, uh, it is recommended to wear the hat, uh, or maybe a, a whole um, yeah, a suit or what? Yes, yeah. suit, and uh, that you are uh, safe from the from the bee yeah. uh, uh, bees uh, poison, mm. if you will call it mm. so. Mm. But uh, when there are classes here. They don't need that because we don't open the the beehives. We just check from uh, a little uh, distance, yeah. uh, and um, in in the in the old, in the spring and in the summer, I have a, a show a hive also. There, I can open the the windows, and um, the children can look at the bees without um, harm them. Uh, uh, or being harmed yeah uh, and that is the thing that they see that it's a, a natural uh, thing to have them yeah um, you don't need to uh, look like an astronaut no it's a very strong trend now with uh, a lot of more, uh, people are getting interested in beekeeping uh, and especially young people and I will also say a lot of women actually it's been a, a typical uh, hobby for I would say uh, older men or middle-aged men uh, typically uh, at least in Sweden I think in many other countries as well uh, until maybe uh, early 2000 or something like that it's always been women as well of course but not as much as now so I, I guess you've seen that as well during your your courses you yes, have had. Yes I have seen that in my course there was uh, there were uh, as much women as uh, men yeah. um, uh, and uh, who wanted to learn m much about beekeeping yeah. uh, and uh, this is a trend um, not not just uh, the the young and and the women but um, folks everywhere not just on the countryside but mm. even in the towns yeah. we make 
come back to this yes, that, later. We're, yeah, definitely. We're, we're going to have an episode, you and me, later on, that we, where we talk about urban beekeeping. Uh, yes. So we'll come back to that. Uh, but the trend is strong and that's a great thing. But it's always good to have some basics and to, to understand uh, how to work with the bees, that you shouldn't fear them, but you should have respect for them uh, and so on. So uh, I thought we could um, uh, start by just open up and just show a little bit the bees yes. and then you can tell us a little bit what you see and what your typical, we call it in, as a beekeeper, inspection. Uh, you do it on a quite regular basis, sometimes every second week or something, depending on uh, if it's the middle of the season, the middle of the summer. Uh, in the winter time you don't do anything basically, sometimes you go out and check and listen and you, so on. You check, check yeah. Uh, yeah. that's right. Um, um, uh, now in the autumn it's um, uh, time to, to get them ready for the winter and I'm starting with this today. Um, you have to uh, give them a treatment uh, that they can uh, clear the, the dangerous um, enemy Varroa <coughs> constructor. Yeah. It's a, a little insect <coughs> who uh, eats uh, the, the larvae of the of the uh, bees. Uh, it it lives on them. Uh, so uh, we have to to make sure that they uh, can. Yeah, that there are not so much of these insects. Um, it's a parasite. A parasite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, then you have to uh, make sure that they have enough uh, food uh, during the winter. Uh, not all people know that uh, you have to uh, to give them the food in the autumn so that they uh, have the food all over the winter. They have to have food all the time during the winter. Um, to to keep the warmth in the beehive. Yeah. Yes, but we can open yeah, and yes. we can check li a little bit. Um, you can tell tell us a little bit what what you're holding in your hand. Yes. There. What's that? That's a smoker, and um, it's a, a kind of uh, telling the bees that we are coming now, um, that um, we want to check their beehive, but the. The thing is working like as you know you're simulating uh, a big fire in the in the wood. The bees are uh, smelling the the smoke and uh, they believe that now is a fire coming. So they will try to get a lot of honey into the stomachus uh, stomachus or. Um, to, to can start again yeah. after the fire. Yeah, they get calm. They get yes, calmer. Yeah. I, I, oh, the the honey does them calm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's like this, us, we eat, we feel better. Yes, <laughs> if we take two or three uh, beers. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you are exactly. going to be like calm. Like a true also. German or Swede for that for that yes. matter. <laughs> but um, uh, we have to check. I I uh, as I said recommend to get the hat on when you check the, the yeah. beehives. Yeah. And now in autumn, is, it is um, always uh, recommended because the bees are, um, yeah, they are uh, a little afraid that you will, uh, that you want to get their honey. Yeah. So they won't want to defend their, yeah. Yeah. their hive. Yeah. So maybe it's better we take on the hat. hat. Yes. Definitely. And especially, then, yeah, especially the face is, is something that it, they can attack, like the, the eyes and the mouth. So that's what you yes, want to check. They are also attracted by the white of the of the teeth and the uh, and yeah. the ears, uh, eyes, um, and um, so it's um, yeah, it's um, you can keep calm as a beekeeper when yeah. you don't have to no. <coughs> uh, to uh, defeat you. No, defend yourself, yeah, defend. exactly. Yes. And this, uh, this uh, just before we, yes, just, you, this is, yes, you have bought, right? So, uh, th this, the roof, or have you this, made it yourself also? Uh, I have made this also, okay. uh, about um, the, the iron uh, plate yeah. um, and uh, it's no insulation. Uh, no insulation no? in no? the in my beehives. No. Uh, uh, but the 
the roof lengths up, uh, there's a, a little isolation that they keep their heads warm, yeah. we say. Yeah. Um, they've, uh, yeah, the heat is, is, is the of heat course, is, coming from the b below, so... Yes. Yeah. Uh, now we are giving them a, a little bit of smoke. Yeah. And you can take, uh, I guess I would use something from, from the... Every, you can pick anything from the forest, from the ground, yes. basically. Yes. Mostly uh, I take the... Uh, the bark yeah. of some tree, yeah. uh, but in this case we don't need so much uh, fire, um, not so much smoke, no. so it's okay if we just take a little bit of paper yeah. and then I'm lifting up the... Yeah, you have both uh, plastic, I see, a uh, plastic roof here. This is a, this is a, a window yeah. um, and a uh, most mostly, I uh, try to avoid the plastic, but yeah. I give them a little bit of uh, darkness again after they get the smoke. Okay. About a minute or two. Okay. Um, so they don't feel n somebody want to to steal the honey. Uh, this is a reason why we we choose to have uh, bright clothes uh, okay. as beekeepers because the instinct of the bees says if this is a, a dark person may it's a, b a beer or something a like beer, that yeah, yeah beer and, and wanted to steal want to steal the the honey yeah uh, so i set the the roof on again about a minute then i take it away okay <coughs> and, and this is some plexi glass yes. or something it's not yes. plastic it's no uh, but uh, I, as I said, I try to avoid any plastic in beekeeping, yeah. uh, and this they cannot. Uh, uh, it's the word rub. They cannot. Yeah, no, uh, no, no, they cannot really chew cannot, on it or, uh, or, or the heat. They actually, also the uh, the heat will deform the plastic, and, and it's not good. It, it sometimes, if you're unlucky, there is always chemicals in plastics yes. that could potentially. At cool. least, but this is this is solid. This will last a long time. Yes. So that's a um, good now you see the the bees are um, there are some uh, um, uh, moving up there, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe you need to get the, give them a little bit more smoke to make them uh, calm. But uh, mostly it works as we just give them two uh, or three cuffs. Yes, and you, you can see they move away from the, the smoke, yeah, instinctively, yeah. And here we have, uh, in Sweden, in, normally we have 10 frames uh, in this kind of uh, uh, Langsroth or yes. um, kind of box and hive. In, in this case, uh, there are 11 because I'm oh, preparing yeah. okay. this um, beehive for the, in, for the winter. Okay. And uh, so they get much more uh, place to, to spare the honey. Okay. in the honey comes. I didn't know that. Um, I have just 10 frames in the lower uh, box mm -hmm. uh, in f uh, to, to get started uh, faster at the spring. Mm -hmm. But now in the in the upper box we have 11 pieces, uh, frames, um, and um, they had... This hive has got a lot of honey uh, already. Mm. So in this case maybe we, we cannot see the brood in, uh, in see. the upper box, but we, we have a check. Yeah, so normally what you do is uh, you, after the smoke, and you can also see they are super calm here. This I would say for, for those who are not so familiar with bees, uh, a lot of uh, hives they are even if you have smoke. I, I, mean, I personally I don't use smoke at all, but a lot of people do, uh, and regardless, uh, a, a hive, uh, normally the bees will come up uh, at, yes. at least a, a little bit more. So I would say this, uh, this is a very calm uh, hive. Yes. They're, they're just moving around, they're totally ignoring us. Uh, they at are, least for now. <laughs> they are now preparing for the fire, Yes. as we said. Yeah. Um, in this case, um, Ella, uh, I have to say, uh, I try to remove a frame in in the lower box i have a, a extra uh, frame which you can remove very uh, quick and easy in this case we have to work a little harder and the bees are 
are using their own uh, their own kind of uh, glue. Yeah, uh, I can show it on the yeah. on the plexiglass. Yeah, um, this brown thing is called propolis, and yeah. the bees are using it to uh, yes to. Um, yeah, to get rid of the the holes in the in the beehive. Yeah, to glue uh, or to to sh close the close down openings. For example, yes. if it's uh, some some place there is coming in cold air or something. Yes, and in addition to this, the propolis is uh, disinfecting. Yes. Uh, stuff uh, mm. they use to uh, to uh, spread all over the beehive to. Um, to prevent bacteria and other uh, yeah. sicknesses to, yeah. to spread. Yeah. So it has a lot of functions. I think yes. They're also researching on that, so that's uh, something that we'll probably hear more from. I believe this. Um, so and when you start from, from the sides, uh, normally yes. you'll see honey. And in, they, this, yeah. in this uh, frame you can see honey. Uh, this one is really, uh, uh, this already has locked yeah, on capped, it. Yeah, capped, it's capped. Yes, yeah. capped honey. Mm. And on, in these other, other cells you can see the honey about um, two thirds. Yeah. Uh, and so they are filling it up with honey, with nectar. Yeah. And um, they are ventilating away the water in the nectar to get the honey. Yeah. Um, so this is the stuff they need to survive the winter yeah and, and they, they cap the, the honey the, when it's capped it's normally maximum 18 percent or something like that uh, water so then, yes. they, then they know it will not uh, geese it will not uh, um, be anything uh, it won't get bad uh, yes it will last a long time yes and uh, this is why uh, we when we when we um, harvest the, the honey just have to wait till until the the honey has under 20 percent of water yeah um, otherwise you will not be glad about the honey no the quality no you yeah now we are moving a, a little bit uh, to the center center of the beehive here is it is honey bo mm. both capped and uh, open yeah. honey cells yeah and it's a bit darker as you can see and it's just because the the honeycomb is it's a bit older here yes it's nothing wrong with it it's just that it's been here for, for a longer time and it tends to to get uh, darker yes in the other season uh, it is uh, darker because of the uh, pollen maybe it's called also uh, yeah, something and pollination some, something about the process also with the honeycomb that it's, yes it, it gets darker with time so. and the propolis in the propolis does, probably, probably yeah does it also For sure yeah so and now it uh, will be more interesting because we are we can see the first cells with uh, brood in here you can see a little bit of a top on the on the cupped cells it's a difference uh, between them and yeah those yeah the, it's the honey also, here's also it's honey, honey and here it is uh, uh brood. brood brood yeah yes so it's it's bees that will when it's capped like this we're just waiting for the bees to to come out eventually uh, it will be i think 16 days for for the queen Yes, that's right, and uh, 21 days for the working bees. For the worker bee. and these are worker bees. Yes, yeah. the most of, of them. Uh, here you can see uh, a drone. Yeah. This is the, the male yeah. bee, if you yeah, will call, here, yeah, want to call it so. It's much bigger than that. Um, but it has no uh, venom. No. It cannot uh, sting you. Sting no. you. No. And yes. This is a beautiful and, frame. It's a and, and you see that uh, there are some drones left. Yeah. Uh, in the autumn, the bees are... Um, they don't need the drones anymore for the season. There are no uh, queens left to... Um, who has to, to be... Uh, yeah, to be fer fer uh, yes. fertilized, uh, fertilized, but to, be, to, ma to mate with. Yes. No. So we the closer we get to the center, we'll, the more of the brood 
uh, we might should, find should, uh, should be. be yeah. uh, but in this case, I guess they have moved to the uh, lower um, yeah. to the lower box yeah. because in this case you see it's just honey. Yeah. Um, but this is this is quite uh, quite a lot of honey. That's it's uh, yes. It's, a it's good about sign. it's about two and a half kilo. Kilos, yeah. Mm. Uh, or about uh, kilos in the in the uh, yeah. frame. Yeah. Um, so all of the box uh, contains about uh, twenty-five honey if it's well kilos. Uh, if it's yeah. filled kilos. Yeah. yeah, that's about forty pounds, something like that. Yes, for those maybe U.S. watchers. And here it's honey also. Yeah. And here's also some pollen, I think. Yes. That's the uh, of you if you want it want to call it so it's the it's the thing uh, mankind needed need most. Um, yeah. Bees are one of the um, most important uh, Pollinator. po pollinators. Yeah. Uh, and um, Yes, mankind has to to see uh, that we don't get rid of our pollinators. No. In some parts of China, they don't have any insects uh, left, so they have to pollinate the the trees, the fruit trees, by themselves yeah. with brushes. And yeah. this is not a future no. we w want to have. No. Here we have some brood too. Yeah. You see, there's a different color here. So yeah, and also it's a bit, as you say, that it's sticking up a little bit. It's not flat against um, the cells. So I there we have a lot of worker bees coming up. There are some cells with uh, egg yeah. uh, in it, but not so much. Um, now in the autumn, the uh, the bees are producing the winter bees, the winter working bees who survive the winter, they will not fly out and uh, uh, fetch, fetch honey no. uh, on the meadows and uh, or in the forests, but they have to guarantee that the, uh, the queen is sitting warm and uh, gets over the winter and yeah. they will start in, in the spring. Yeah. So if we would have been here, now we're here in the late August, but if we were here in, uh, let's say, in the middle of July or in the late J June, it, this would be filled with brood. Yes. So, so now they have, uh, the brood is, is getting out there, they will go from, I think, up to 80,000 in a big hive to something like 20,000 uh, yes. in the winter. 20,000 bees uh, during the winter and there are dying a, a lot of bees during the winter also. Mm. So it can happen that they are starting restarting in the spring with about uh, 5,000 bees. Mm. Um, but it is a, a, such an explosion in the development that they are getting up to 80,000 in the middle of the season. Yeah. Uh, that's quite fantastic. Yeah. And you can see that the bees are super calm here. They're totally focused on working. They're totally uninterested in us. If we would have, if I would start, uh, uh, you know, smashing my hand like this, or if I drop something here, the vibrations will um, uh, get them started. They will become more aggressive and they will come up and wonder what's going on uh, and, and try to, to protect themselves. Yes. Or if they, and also I think they have so, so much food here. So I think that also calms them. If they would have little food, That's right. I think they would be more aggressive. Yes, more uh, nervous about the winter yeah. uh, to come. And um, here I, in this hive, they have about 15 uh, kilos of honey already. Yeah. Um, now we don't have so much flowers uh, out in the, in the forests and on the meadows that they can fill it up. Uh, holy, uh, oh. so I have to to give them some. Uh, you, you think so? I, I I was thinking that 15 kilo. I, I mean, not, I, I know that you recommend like 18 kilos something. No, I recommend more than you 20. Do that. You do more than 20. Okay, okay. Because I don't have uh, insulated uh, hives. Ah, ah, that's a difference. Uh, and I want to make sure that they uh, survive the winter with 
very good uh, reserves yeah. uh, so that they can st start even if the spring is uh, a cold spring and uh, okay. maybe maybe they cannot get out because of uh, snow or, or rain yeah. uh, so I want to have uh, some kilos yeah so what for your uh, a lot of American Extra. people are look watching perhaps uh, and then uh, that's what, about 40 pounds it's about double for one kilo two pounds so it's about 40 kilos for uh, two boxes uh, in your case with 10 or 11 frames but this is Langsroth size in the US you have something called uh, uh, Hofmeister uh, or similar it's it's like uh, almost it's just like half perhaps or two-thirds to the size yes of this so there's it, a lot of different it, kind of frames yeah uh, so it and, depends on what you have and sizes yeah um but um uh, or not just this but uh, a lot of different kind of hives yeah uh you can keep bees on as uh, you can say in a in a post box yeah yeah uh, but um this kind of uh, beekeeping um, it's very common in Sweden and um, you can build your own uh, hives, you can um, build your own frames, you yeah. can, uh, but it's, uh, it's good to have the same frame as your neighbor yeah. because sometimes you will want to sell uh, a beehive yeah. or you will uh, uh, buy a you want to buy a beehive and then you have to have the the same format yeah yeah uh, if you not have you have some difficulties so to move the bees from one yeah. kind of frames to the other a, a lot of people might wonder what about the cost how much money do you have to invest to to become a, a beekeeper and I, I would just like to mention that as you said you you have built this from and i, I think the first time you told me that even from scrap materials but i guess now you have used a little bit more something that yes from things you produced but but you can do th this. you can build the boxes yeah. uh, about uh, old um, of old uh, uh, wood yeah. um, but I, I try to to use the the same fine uh, uh, wood for all my yeah. mo all my hives uh, but if you are really keen on um, to begin with the, with the beekeeping at first read yeah um you have to know something about bees yeah. to to get started yeah that's the most important thing that you understand what you're doing yeah. now when we have the the beehive open you may maybe not see it but there's a a, a a lot of wasps uh, yes. attacking the, yeah, the I beehive saw, I here. Saw that, yeah. um, they are smelling the, the sweet honey and they try to get some of the load. Yeah. Um, so, if it's okay for you, we are setting yes. the, the plexiglass definitely, on. Definitely, definitely. And um, now I have a little uh, distance has here, so, so uh, I don't want to crush the, crush to crush the, bee. the no. bees. Yes. Uh, but if you are. Uh, if you want to you can give them some smoke again yeah um, yes yeah. and uh, um, also I think in Sweden just for people who doesn't who don't know that that it's quite rare what you have done that I mean build yourself that's one thing but you're not using insulation but you're no. compensating for that by adding more honey I, and that's super interesting because uh, to insulate it's much more expensive, more tricky. And for me, I, I mean, I, I bought my hives from a special shop here in Sweden um, and they come insulated and they are much more heavy than this. So that's also an advantage that you have, it's easier to work with uh, yes. just in terms of size. There are uh, insulated beehives uh, made in, in plast, plastic. plastic yeah. uh, uh, so, uh, but I don't want to have plastic in beekeeping. No. Perhaps uh, you can tell us why. Yes, I, I believe that we don't need the plastic uh, materials in every part of the food uh, chain. Uh, maybe you have reports about the plastic uh, is now everywhere in the in the seas in the in the floods uh, everywhere yeah. and um, I'm trying not to begin at the bottom of the chain with uh, with plastic no. here uh, we don't want to have it in the food no. we don't know what uh, in which way they are uh, they are mm. uh, yes we, we will 
take the results then. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, uh, but uh, back to the to the question about the costs. Um, it's not so expensive to build the boxes by yourself if you are handy. Um, it's not so expensive to fix the frames. That you you have to you have to know that um, that you have some costs for the, for the backs when you begin to uh, to keep bees, and uh, maybe the cost for a, a bee colony for a bee uh, bee themselves. Yes, yeah. uh, because if you don't catch a, 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 a swarm, you you have to buy them. Yeah, um, and. Um, or maybe you know a beekeeper who can help you get you started. Um, it's always good to have a mentor who yeah. helps you about uh, w with the first the first steps in beekeeping. Yeah. As I mentioned, um, you have to read. Yeah. You have to know the the circle of the circle of life of the bees, yeah. how it it is working, mm. how they are uh, developing, and uh, then how to help them uh, against the, yeah, the enemies, yeah. as I said, the Varua constructor uh, cons and, and uh, a lot of other things are disturbing the, the bees and the insects. Uh, it's the monocultures we, we are be building up everywhere all over the world and it's the poison we use yeah. uh, in uh, in the farming, yeah, the sh so. change habitat, as we you know you know very well, and and uh, um, so you say yeah, you, the agriculture and also the parasites, uh, which also comes from having also sometimes too large apiaries, too large places. We have so much bees that uh, if one hive is infected uh, with some form of disease, uh, it will you know spread. Yes, so that's also something. It's good to have a fair amount of, of hives like you have but not yeah, it's, too many it's about home. seven eight uh, beehives in in one garden yeah uh, it's not recommended to get a lot more no uh, because it's the same if you have a, a lot of uh, cows in in uh, and you have uh, three thousand cows yeah <laughs> one one sickness yeah. Uh, yeah and you have no cows left no. Uh, so uh, it's the same thing there that uh, if you try to have a little bit more ecological uh, beekeeping uh, try not to have too much bees uh, at one place no i would just add also that uh, i think yes you said study and read but i think the best thing is to actually to take a course uh, to, to learn. Uh, you don't have to, but I recommend it. Uh, yes. Because the, the, the advantage which that, that you meet other people uh, and you see, like we are today, about how, what do you mean by that? How do you, does that work? And someone else is standing there and she or he asks some questions and you learn a lot from, from this interaction. Yes. Uh, so I think if you can, uh, do take a course, a beginner's course, uh, and start from there. Yes, uh, if you don't have uh, uh, the possibility to to go on uh, such a course, uh, just try to to um, to get in contact with one beekeeper yeah, exactly. and uh, and follow him or her uh, on the way uh, through the bee garden. Yeah. Um, you can always help them and uh, learn. Learning by doing is the word in this case. Yeah. Uh, but if you have the, the theoretical uh, ground, you are understanding very fast how the whole thing is working. Yeah. If you see a bee swarm mm. um, anywhere, uh, they are very calm. They yeah. are. You can tell perhaps the audience or the watchers. Uh, what 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 the swarm what, what's happening it's yes. swarming what's it's it's the kind of the uh the bees to develop uh, if they are if it's getting too uh what's the name for crowded. it <laughs> too crowded in in the beehive when they have a lot of honey reserves uh and uh, believe that the the old queen maybe is getting too old that's some of the reasons why bees uh are trying to to get a new home they are uh, gathering outside the beehive uh, uh, the 
or most of the of the flying bees the flying working bees are gathering on uh, some tree and uh, uh, they are sending out some uh, agents who look for a new place to be yeah and um, when they uh, believe that they found something uh, who fits then they altogether uh, are flying yeah. there yeah. Uh, and in the old hive there are remaining a lot of uh, bee queen cells uh, going to bee queens uh, and um, a great deal with uh, great deal of uh, working bees who are not capable to be outside um, uh, yet no. uh, and the beekeeper is trying to to catch the swarm yeah. uh, because um, there's a lot of bees who can work for for the beekeeper who yeah. can uh, be catched and uh, build a new bee colony if you move them a little bit um, this is working very well yeah And we're standing in front of a beautiful, quite large, I would say, uh, apple tree here. Uh, and that's a good example, I think, because uh, the apples, the core of the apple will develop uh, and become larger. In, um, the core will be larger, so the apple in turn will be larger. And that goes for, I think, even it's up to 60% larger when it, it, if you have pollinators in the area. Uh, and also blueberries and things like that. So it has other benefits. And I see you have more apple trees here. So, so uh, uh, if you have a garden, but you don't have to have a garden. I would like to say that because uh, we're going to talk about that in another episode. We're going to have Christoph Frank back again. And then we're going to talk about urban beekeeping. For, uh, you can actually be a beekeeper in the quite uh, dense, densely populated area, like a big city, like Berlin, like Stockholm, like New York. So we'll come back to that. You don't have to have a large, quite large garden uh, like this. You can actually have bees on the top of buildings uh, or in a densely populated area where you have a lot of small houses, small housing and so on. Um, so that's a great thing, I think. So Yes, it's possible, but um, it's best for the bees to have an environment where they can find a lot of uh, flowers, uh, a lot of uh, food for them. Yeah. Um, uh, but we will come back to this. Yeah. Um, the pollinating uh, is showing in in our garden because the the trees uh, have a lot of roots. Yeah, fantastic, uh, fantastic. and uh, very big ones also. Yeah. I'm so this is the the great thing about the bees that they are helping our insects uh, to pollinate all the all the flowers yeah. we need to have pollinated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will. I want to mention that uh, we cannot guarantee the pollinating with just uh, the the bees we have. Uh, mankind has as no. uh, as insects. It's much more uh, important that we have all the other insects, the solitaire bees, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, flies, other insects yeah. who are pollinating the 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 trees and the. Yeah. And the forests yeah. so um, we have to uh, we have to save them for the for the future for yeah. our future yeah and and what we can do as you said is not go only becoming beekeepers because that's just honeybees and the honeybees they actually sometimes um, spread so much that the other insects have a hard time so so you need both and uh, that's my point there is that uh, we need to change the habitat as well so we need to have a lot of wildflowers meadows uh, and things like that so we can have both wild bees uh, wild pollinators and honeybees yes. but honeybees i think the thing with them is that uh, once you get into this world of beekeeping you learn more and you get appreciation more for uh, the nature how things are c connected uh, and also um, the importance of uh, insects in general pollinators in general so i think it's a good step to That's... start with beekeeping at least, Absolutely at least it's opened right. my, my eyes a lot. Uh, yes. Thanks, thanks to the bees. So with that, thank you so much for, for this. And You're we'll be, have you back in uh, two other episodes coming up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, if you want to watch the videos as soon as they come out, consider subscribing. And if you like, leave a comment below for us to improve the show. 
In the next episode, we're going to join uh, Christoph once again, but we're going to step into his honey shop or beekeeping shop uh, to learn more about what you can do with the honeycomb, because there are a lot of things uh, from the bees uh, more than just honey. So uh, join us uh, for the next week uh, in the next episode and um, to learn more. See you then.